2 Timothy chapter 3, and uh, we've been on a series for seven or eight weeks now, and it's entitled, The Holy Word. Can you say that with me one time? The Holy Word. And our foundation uh, scripture here is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and uh, in verse 15 it says, And that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Say that with me, Holy Scriptures. Um, I got a little ahead of myself. Let's pray over the Word tonight, okay? (laughs) Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your Word. And we hook faith together. And we are asking you for revelation of your Word tonight. Lord, we're asking you to minister to people in the building, people watching online. Get us exactly what we need. And we thank you, Lord, for helping me to deliver this message just the way you'd have me to. And for giving me supernatural utterance and ability to minister your word, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, this verse said that these scriptures are holy scriptures, and the rest of the verse said that are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, so that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now go back to verse 15. It said these scriptures are holy scriptures. And that's where we got the title of our series, The Holy Word. God's Word is holy. Holy means that it's sacred. It means that it's divine. It's hallowed. Um, It's something that's worthy of our respect and our reverence. One definition of the word holy means that it's uncommon. And what that means is there's none like it. No words like God's words. God's words are alive. Life-giving words. And uh, to be holy also means that they're free from fault. Free from defect. The psalmist said this. He said, Lord, my heart stands in awe of your word. Come on, is that your attitude tonight? Is that your heart tonight? My heart stands in awe at your, of your word. One translation I think says, my heart trembles at your word. The psalmist ca- caught a hold of something about God's word. He caught a hold of how holy it was and how precious it was. And he had a high level of respect for God's word. How about you? We have a high level of respect for the word of God because it is a holy thing. Now go with me to Proverbs chapter 13. This has been another one of our scriptures we've looked at. A number of times in this uh, series, Proverbs chapter 13. Say it with me one time. The word of God is holy. It's holy. It's a holy thing. Now, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 13 says this. It says, whoso despises the word, Proverbs 13, 13, whoso despises the word will be destroyed. But he that fears the commandment, he shall be rewarded. So you can see that how you and I handle the Word of God is going to affect what we experience in our lives. And this word despise, if you don't respect the Word, if you don't honor the Word, if you don't have any time for it, if it doesn't have any place in your life, you become open game for the enemy. You become vulnerable to destruction and being destroyed. Is it true? Come on, do you believe the Bible? (laughs) You believe that verse? If your respect for the word is low, you're going to be susceptible to things that somebody who has a high level of respect for the word is not susceptible to. Destruction and being destroyed. Now you'll see this tonight. It's not God going like this. Oh, you don't respect my word? I'm going to destroy you. That's not not what's happening. That's what a lot of people read this verse and think, oh, I better come to church. I don't want God to destroy me. (laughs) Well, that's not what the scripture is talking about. You'll see that as we go. Um, but the other side of this scripture is that if you fear the commandment, if you respect the word, if you give it place in your life, then it would be a reward to you. It would be a help to you, wouldn't it? Now, um, let's go tonight to Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter five. And I wanted to look at a scripture there tonight in Isaiah chapter five. Thank you, Lord. If you lack respect for the word, if you despise it, if you don't honor it, there's destruction. If you do respect it, if you do reverence it, there's a reward. 
Now, why is that? And this is something we've talked about over the past couple of weeks. But the Word of God is your answer. It is your remedy for whatever you're going through. We looked at Scripture after Scripture that we found out that you're born again by the Word. So your spirit got fixed by the Word. There's Scriptures that talk about your mind and your will, your emotions, your soul gets saved or healed or made whole by the Word. Jeremiah talked about how the Word was joy and rejoicing to his heart. Proverbs said that God's word would be health to our flesh. So there, and there, we read other scriptures. That there's a scripture that says that the truth will make you free. So anything you're in bondage to, the word would be your answer. It would be your remedy. It would be your help. Now, if, if you push aside the word, if you push aside the remedy, if you push aside the help, then the only thing left is to not be remedied, to not be helped. So that gives you insight into the scripture to say, if you despise the word, if you don't respect it, if you don't honor it, if you push it aside, that's why you're being destroyed because the thing that was supposed to prevent the destruction was the word, but you pushed it aside. And um, why would you have to say this in church? Why would we have to talk about this to, to believers? Should we assume that every believer respects the word? Well, just look around. I mean, just, just, just open your eyes and pay attention a little bit. Most of the people that call themselves Christians don't even come to church and don't even read the Bible. So how much respect do they have for the Word? Not very much. And are they open game then for the enemy? Because the Word is the answer. The Word is your help. If you push it aside, you're pushing aside your answer. You're pushing aside your help. So you and I, what we've asked the Lord is, Lord, help us to develop a greater level of respect for your Word so that we're never caught pushing it aside, are not treating it with the honor that we should treat it. It's the remedy. And Jesus talked about it in Matthew 13. He said that there was a group of people that they hardened their heart, they closed their eyes and clogged their ears to the word, and they weren't healed, they weren't converted, they didn't get the help and the victory that they so desperately needed. Now why did that happen? Because when their word came, they didn't respond right. They didn't have any respect for the word. So they closed their eyes. They hardened their heart. They weren't receptive. They didn't respond. So the remedy came. The answer came to help them. But because they didn't respond right, it wasn't able to help them the way God wanted it to. And he said, at any time, if you would open your eyes and your ears and soften your heart to the word, it would come and heal you and convert you. It would be your answer. It would be your help if you responded right. So here's a statement I want to give to you. And this is this is a big statement. It, this is one of the statements that came out one night in the middle of the message. I didn't even have it before the message, but when I was preaching, out it came. And, and so I, I put it now, wrote it down and put it here in, in my notes because I wanted to say it again to you. Um, how you respond to the Word of God is the most important thing in your life. Because when the Word comes, it's your answer. It's your remedy. If you don't respond right, then you're not going to see the results of that word working in your life. How you respond when you hear the word, it matters. And it matters big time. It could be the difference between failure and defeat. It could be the difference between freedom and bondage. When the word comes, how did you respond? Did you, did you receive it? Were you receptive? Did you believe it? Are you in agreement with it? Are you yielding to it? Or did you kind of just go, okay, I know and then just push it aside. That would make a difference in the results you get, right? That you get in your life. Now, um, what we said is that as you recognize the holiness of God's Word, and you acknowledge the holiness of God's Word, once you see how holy the Word is, it immediately affects the level of respect you have for the Word. When you see how holy it is and that the Word of God is a holy thing, then it's going to affect the level of respect that you have for that word. Your respect immediately goes up when you recognize how holy the word is. Now, when your respect goes up, how much you respect it affects how you respond to it. If your respect is high, then your response is going to be right. When you hear the word, there's going to be a yielding. There's going to be a responding. You're going to hear the word, and you're going to go, Yes, Lord, I believe that word. Yes, Lord, I, I receive that word. I'm not going to push that aside. I'm going to cling to that word. Those are your holy words. That's your word. You're talking to me in that verse. And why would you respond like that? Because your respect is high 
And why would your respect be so high? Because your eyes have been opened to how holy the scriptures are. These are God's words to me. And when your response is right, then the word is able to produce the result that it can produce if you respond right. And that's what happened in Matthew 13. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, the word came and the only thing that was the problem was how you responded. It was your remedy. It was your help. But when it came, you clogged your ears, you closed your eyes, you hardened your heart, you weren't receptive, you didn't respond, so you didn't get cured. The only thing that needs to change is how you respond to the Word. And the only reason you wouldn't respond right is because you're not aware of what you're in the presence of. The, I told you last week, if, Jesus, if you're battling anxiety or you're worried about something and Jesus knocked on, on your door tonight when you got home and said, Hey, cast your cares over onto me. I'll take care of it for you. It'd be hard for you to just go, I know you said that, and just, just ignore him. Your draw would probably hit the floor. You would probably be on your knees, and you would go, oh, yes, Jesus, yes, I cast the care of it over onto you. You're going to take care of it for me. There would be a response there, wouldn't there? Why? Because you would be aware of how holy his words were if he was standing there saying them to you in the flesh. Well, they're not any less holy than they are when you read them in this book. They're just as holy. And I have, this is news for you. He's not going to say something different than you, to you if he showed up at your house and sat down with you. He's, if he said something to you, he'd just say what's in here. This doesn't need improvement. This is perfect. If you needed a counseling session with Jesus and you said, I'm just so anxious and just so worried and, about this situation in my life, he would tell you this, cast your care onto me, I'll take care of it for you, and don't let your heart be troubled. And you would find those exact same words in the Gospel of John and in 1 Peter chapter 5. He doesn't need to improve on this. This is perfect. You don't need a special visitation from the Lord. You need to believe what He said in here. This is His word to you. This is His word to me. And how you respond affects the level of power you're going to see this word have in your life. And the level of effect this word will have in your life. Um, in Hebrews chapter 4, there's a scripture that said, The gospel was preached unto us as well as unto them. So there's two groups of people. Both of them heard the word. And it says it, did not profit, it didn't profit them the way it profited us because they didn't mix it with faith when they heard it. And what he's saying is it helped us because we responded right. It didn't help them because they didn't respond right. So how you, res how you respond matters. Can you say amen to that? Now, have you found Isaiah chapter 5? Come on, say it with me. The Word is my answer. The Word is my remedy. And I'm going to respond right when I hear the Word. Recognizing and acknowledging the holiness of it. It'll, it'll set your response right when you realize these are the holy words of God, the creator of the heaven and earth and the, the universe wrote this down for me and had it written down for me. These are his words to me. He wouldn't say anything different if he was staring me in the eyes. His words to me, it's a very holy thing. And when you recognize that, it'll set your response. All right. Now, um, Isaiah chapter 5. And let's look down here. I believe we're going to start in verse 1. Everybody doing okay so far? Thank you, Lord. Now, what happens if you push the word aside? If you push the remedy aside, you're going to miss out on the cure. So if you go into the doctor and you have this thing on your foot <laughs> and it itches, and he says, well, just here, rub this on it for three days, three times a day, and it'll, it'll get rid of it. It'll clear it up. And, and you say, no, I don't, want, I don't want the medicine. I just want you to fix my foot. Just fix my foot. And he said, well, here's the medicine. Rub it on there three times a day <laughs> for three days, and it'll make it go. If you reject the remedy, you miss out on the cure. Are you seeing this? And this is going to cost you. And this is costing a lot of believers, and it's costed you and me at times, cost you and me at times when we pushed the word aside and ignored it when it was our answer. We read this last week in Ezekiel chapter 20, 
about a group of people that um, it said this, it said that God, God said, I gave them my statutes and my commandments, but they despised my word. And he said, if a man would hear my word and do it, he would live by my word. And what he's pointing us to is that the word is supposed to be our sustaining source. It's everything to you and me. This word is your peace. It's your joy. It's your strength. It's your salvation. It gives you faith and faith is your victory. This word is every, it's your freedom. It's your deliverance. This word is everything to you and me. And Jesus said that. He said, man doesn't live by bread alone. He lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This word would be your sustaining source for anything and everything you're going through. And he said, I gave it to them. The Message Bible said, so that they could live well. But they despised it. They, they rejected it. They pushed it aside. Now, here's a question. Can they push the word aside that came to give them life, to came, to came so that they could live well, can they push it aside and just pray, Lord, help me live well? Now, why am I saying this? Because this is how a lot of Christians live. They pay no attention to the word, and then they ask, try to pray in results that only come from following the word. I'm going to say that to you again. <laughs> a lot of Christians ignore the word, pay no attention to anything God says, and then try to pray results in that only come from following the word. Let me give you an example. <laughs> you ever, maybe you've prayed it. And if you have, I got a, a, a broadcast I'm going to do for our new broadcast, Faith for Life broadcast. And it's the title is this, don't pray for peace because it doesn't work. Just stop because it doesn't work. Now, you, I, I, that's the kind of look I was expecting you to give me. That's supposed to be a shocking statement. <laughs> now, what am I saying? People will say, Lord, give me peace. Give me peace. Give me peace. And they pay no attention to anything he's actually said in his word about peace. And if you open up the Bible, you would find one of the things that Jesus said about peace is he said this, my peace I gave to you. <laughs> my peace I've left with you. So do you have it already? So see, instead of just asking for it, Lord, give it to me, you need to respond to the remedy. Thank you, Lord. I, have, I do have your, I guess I do. I don't feel like I do, but I guess I do. Because <laughs> you said I have it. It's working in me right now. Thank you, Lord, that I have your peace. And then there's scriptures that talk about if you don't guard your thought life, you're not going to walk in peace. And what people like to do is they, they don't like any of that because that requires they actually do something. And they just say, Lord, give me peace. And they're trying to pray a result in that if they would just follow the master, they would walk in peace the way God wants them to. Are you seeing this? And that's what happened. These people in Ezekiel 20, they pushed aside the word that came so that they could live well. Well, you can't just pray to live well now. You need to respond to the word that came. And that's how you would live well. Are you seeing this? Now I'm ready. Isaiah chapter 5. It's been up there for 10 minutes. I think that we should try to read it. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 5. You doing okay? Come on, we live by the word, don't we? And we're not going to ignore it or push it aside or reject it. We're going to yield to it. We're going to respond to it. Isaiah chapter 5. And this is in verse 1. It says this, I, Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, Touching his vineyard. Now this is God's vineyard. And the, this vineyard is referring to God's people. It's his vineyard and the vineyard is his people. Do you understand this so far? <laughs> and it says this, My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it, gathered out the stones thereof, planted it with the choicest vine, the best, built a tower in the middle of it, and also a wine press therein. This is a nice vineyard, isn't it? <laughs> nice vineyard. Very fruitful. There's a fence around it to protect it. No stones in it. Nice big tower in the middle of it with a wine press in the top. Come on, say nice vineyard. Nice, nice vineyard. Nice. And... Who, who created this nice vineyard? The Lord did, right? And it says this, it says, He looked at it 
that it should bring forth grapes, and instead it brought forth wild grapes. And verse 3 says, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and Judah, he said, I pray between me and my vineyard, my people, says the Lord, what could I have done more to my vineyard that I have not done to it? Now this is a big statement that the Lord says. The Lord's saying, I did everything I possibly could. Come on, nice vineyard. <laughs> nice vineyard. What more could I have done to put it in a position to bear the kind of fruit that I wanted to see it, see it bear? Come on, is God into nice things? <laughs> Come on, say it with me. Nice vineyard. Nice. <laughs> you wouldn't have walked by this vineyard without going, whoa, that's a nice vineyard. And he says, what more could I have done? It was, and it, what he's looking for, and you'll see it in these next verses, he was looking for it to bear f this certain kind of fruit. And instead of bearing grapes, good grapes, it was bearing bad, it was bearing the opposite of what he expected it to bear. And you'll see it here. Let's just keep reading. Um, verse 5 said, And now go, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I'm going to take away the hedge thereof, and it's going to be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it will be trodden down. I will lay it to waste. It won't be pruned nor digged. And there will come briars and thorns. And I will also command the clouds that no rain rain upon it. So now the hedge that was there and all the sustaining, all the supplying that it was getting, it's not getting now. Now, you and I, this earth, you, we, we need revelation. People are shocked when bad things happen here. You shouldn't be shocked when bad things happen on the earth. This is a place that is full of the curse. It is full of evil. And the enemy is still the God of this world. And if you and I are going to live down here successfully, protected and live a long, good, strong, blessed life, we're going to need divine protection divine protection because this is a this is a hostile environment there's an enemy that wants to steal kill and destroy and and you know people, christians play church the devil's not playing with you he doesn't play church he wants to steal kill and destroy we take you know well, let me not get into that. a lot of christians let me, say, let me just adjust a little a lot of christians take their spiritual training about as seriously as a kindergarten baseball team takes their practice seriously they, they, they act like, well, I'll just be okay. There is a devil out there. The, the moment you wake up in the morning, from the moment you go to bed at night and while you sleep, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy from you. Every area of your life. And you need to know things about spiritual things. Right? So that you can be, what did the scriptures say in 2 Timothy? So that the man of God would be equipped ready to do a good work in the earth. Well, you have an enemy, so you need to be equipped how to overcome it. And you and I need, need protection. And did you know God, God is in the hedge business? <laughs> did you know that? There's scriptures that talk about the Lord is a shield to those that trust Him. Listen, you, you need to get excited about this tonight. Could something be coming to kill you? A car accident, whatever. And God, could He just step in front of you and it? Does he do this? This is, a, this is a dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Remember when uh, in Job, when the enemy came to God and he said, you've put a hedge around Job and around all his stuff, and he couldn't get to Job. Is that a real hedge? Ask the devil if it's real. How did he know it was there? He bumped into it. He's trying to get to Job and can't get it. It's a shield. And it's real. Is God, does God still do this? And this is what he did for his people. He had a hedge around it. Why? So that they wouldn't be destroyed and devoured. Now keep going. It says this in verse 7. For the vineyard is the Lord of hosts. I'm sorry, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, that word judgment, he looked for right, but he beheld oppression. He looked for righteousness, but beheld a cry. He was looking for them to take their prosperity and do right and good things with it. But instead, this is what they were doing. Go down to verse 
11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until the night, till wine inflames them. And the harp, and the vial, and the tabaret, and the pipe, and the wine are in their feast. Are they having some parties? And are they having fun at their parties? They're taking their prosperity, and they're having parties. But look what it says in the rest of that verse, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of the hands. They don't care about God or what God's doing. They've taken the prosperity and they're consuming it on themselves and not thinking about anything beyond themselves. And this is not good. This is not right. In fact, it was the opposite. They were actually oppressing people. And God was looking for them to do right things. And they're on the other side. They're doing wrong things. Keep going. Verse 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Say captivity. Now why are they gone into captivity? Because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and their multitude is dried up with thirst. So now there's lack. Um, they're famished. They're thirsty. They're in captivity. They're in bondage. Now did you see why it said they were in bondage? It says because they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge. Now, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the Word. The Word which is your remedy, which is your answer. And what about this people? He said they have no knowledge. Now, a lot of times we stop when, whenever you hear this, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And you can just stop right there. But you have to ask this question, well, why do they lack knowledge? Why don't they have any? You know, before I started going after knowledge about God and His Word, I didn't have any, didn't have much. But the more important it became to me, the more I went after it, the more I had. A lot of God's people, they don't have knowledge, but it's not because they never heard or don't know they should come and get some. It's just not important to them. They don't value it. They don't respect the Word. So they don't come to get any knowledge, so they don't have any. Are you seeing this? And if you lack knowledge, you can be destroyed. Because knowledge of the word, uh, the truth makes you free, right? And, and Psalm 91 said the truth would be your shield and your buckler. And in Proverbs it said that a wise man is strong. And in the day of adversity, if you do faint, it's because you're weak. Well, in the day of adversity, if you don't faint and overcome, it's because you're strong. And you're strong because you're wise. And you're wise because of these holy scriptures. Are you seeing this? And these people have no knowledge. And the reason they have none is because the, the Hosea 4 said, because you rejected knowledge. It wasn't important enough to you to come and get it so you don't have any. And now you're vulnerable. Now keep going. Verse 14. We're getting there. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Is this destruction? This is being destroyed and they are being consumed. Now we need to ask this question. Is this what God wanted for them? Let's ask another question. Is God doing this to them? No, the thing that was supposed to prevent the destruction was His Word. I'm a little ahead of myself. Look at verse 24. It says, Therefore, as the fire devour, devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust because, are you listening? Why are they being destroyed? Why is this happening? Because they have cast away the law of the Lord and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Do you see why this is happening? Because their shield, their protection, the word that's supposed to prosper them, the word that they're supposed to live by, what do they do with it? They just cast it aside. Don't pay any attention to it. That's going to cause you a problem if you push aside your remedy. Can you say amen to that? Let me read you this uh, out of another translation. The uh, CEV says this in verse 24. It said, You rejected the teaching of the Holy One of Israel. Now your roots will rot and your blossoms will turn to dust. The voice says you disparaged the word of the Holy One of Israel. Come on, what's going on? Here comes the Word, and what do they do? Close their eyes, clog their ears, harden their heart, 
push it aside, no respect. No respect. And in pushing aside the word, they're pushing aside their safety, their shield, their remedy, their help. So what's left? Destruction and being devoured. Now, don't get the, the mindset that you and I never do any of this. Don't, don't get this idea that, that you and I never just push the word aside. Um, it, it's as subtle as if you're, being mo- if you're being affected, if you're in a battle and you're being moved by what you see, being affected by how you feel, and w- what you've done at that moment is you've pushed the word aside and now you're choosing to look at and yield to and respond to something different. It's that subtle. You do that long enough and you can't walk in victory. Are you seeing this? If you're battling anxiety, and I, re- and I quote you those verses, Jesus left you his peace, cast your care on him. And you nod your head and go, yeah, I know the word says that, but I, I tell you what, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm worried. And you just keep yielding to worry? Well, you've rejected the remedy. And it's that subtle, and it keep, can keep you from seeing the cure. But not you and me, right? Not us. Thank you, Lord. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 30. We're over there in the book of Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. Why were they destroyed? Because they cast away God's word. They despised it. No respect. Didn't recognize how holy it was. Didn't acknowledge the holiness of the word. And they just pushed his words aside. Now Isaiah chapter 30. And let's look here at verse 9. Isaiah 30, verse 9. Everybody doing okay so far? Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. Listen to this. This is a rebellious people, lying children, that will not hear the law of the Lord. Say that. Will not hear the law of the Lord. Now, when it says they will not hear it, that word here, it means they, don't, they won't respond to it. They, won't, they don't regard it. They won't yield to it. It's not that they're not hearing it with their ears, but they won't respond to what they hear. Are you seeing this? And um, what happens to them, and you'll see this here in just a little bit, this word where it says they will not hear the law of the Lord, the opposite of that is when you're, when you're hearing something, the, the definition of that word here is that you're listening with interest. Careful attention. You're listening. Huh? This is how you should be in church. Listening with interest, carefully, with the intention that I'm going to put into practice what I hear. That is what it means to hear it. That is what they're not doing. God's talking. And they don't care. They don't respond. They're not yielding. You ever heard somebody say, I'm not going to hear that. I'm not hearing it. What are you saying? I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm not responding. Come on, they wouldn't hear the law of the Lord. You think this is going to cause them any problems? The voice says this about them. It says they don't even pay attention to what the eternal one has tried to tell them. (laughs) Come on, how about you and me? You ever done any of this? Huh? You don't, don't, even pay, don't even pay attention to what he says. You know what he says, but you won't hear it. You've heard what he says, but you're not responding. If you want to see the remedy work, come on, what do you got to do? You got to be receptive, and you got to respond to it, right? You got to respond to it. There was a time a couple years back, it's been about five years ago now, um, I was attacked in my mind with, uh, I would call it anxiety and depression. And it was, it didn't last real long, but it was, it was weird. (laughs) I'll just say that. It was demonic. Um, There was days that I struggled to get out of, I've never shared this, but I need to share this right now. There's days that I struggled to get out of bed and, and fear would try to come on me and attack me in depression and just, it's hard to explain. I mean, it, it, it's spiritual. It's, it's not natural. People try to say it's a chemical imbalance. It's not a, it, it, it shows up in your chemicals, but it's spiritual. And it was a spiritual attack against me mentally. And um, 
it was, it was depression and it was fear. Strong. And um, what's my answer? The word is my answer. And what happens is, I had, I had to yield to what the word was saying when it didn't even feel like it was true. And uh, God helped me, and, and he ministered to me. But my turnaround happened one day. I remember what happened. It was trying to come on me strong. We live in the country. You can do stuff like this in the country. Don't do stuff like this in town, because you, you might end up in a halfway house. But in the country, you can do this. I went outside, and I, and I shouted as loud as I could, I refuse to fear. I'm not going to yield to this. I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. Are you seeing what I'm doing? I'm responding to the remedy. And I'm telling you, supernaturally, God came in, delivered me, helped me, got free, victory over it. But, but how, do you, how do you get victory? You have to respond to the remedy. You can sit there and wallow in your feelings of discouragement and depression and anxiety. And while you're doing it, you're acting like what God said he didn't even say. I have his peace whether I feel like I do or not. Why? Because that's what he said in his word. And that word's big to me. And I respond to it, and I yield to it, and I let it be my answer. Are you seeing how you get help? Now what are they doing? They won't hear it. They won't respond. They won't yield. They don't regard it. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything to them. It doesn't mean anything to them. Let's keep reading about this, people. I'll try to find somebody in here that did it right in just a second, but let's keep reading about this. Um, what did he say? It said they don't even pay attention to what the eternal one has to tell them. Don't even pay attention to it. And herein lies one of the biggest problems on the earth. People that won't listen. They won't respond. They won't yield. I need to say that statement to you again. One of the, bi the biggest problems on the planet is this. People won't listen. God says something to them, they won't listen. They don't respond. They don't yield. They don't regard it. So it is their remedy, but it's not working for them because when the remedy came, they don't respond. They don't yield. They just sit there, nod their head, and then talk about how they feel. Sit there, and you and I have done some of this too, so let's, not, let's just drop our stones. <laughs> huh? The word's got to be bigger than anything else to you. It's got to be big. And you gotta, when you hear it, you need to respond, don't you? You need to yield. You need to believe it. You need to act on it. Thank you, Lord. Put Psalm 81, 13 on the screen. Let me show you a verse in Psalm 81, 13. Let me, let me show you God's heart. When God, when God gives us His Word. What, let me show you what, what He wants to do. Psalm 81, 13. He said this, Oh, that my people would listen to me. Let, let me read it how, it's, how He's saying it. Oh, that my people, would, if, why won't they, if they would just listen to me. <laughs> Are you hearing his heart? I sent them my word. It is their answer. It is their remedy. It is their help. But they won't respond. They won't yield. They don't regard it. Are you seeing this? What do you say? If they would have walked in my ways, keep going. I would have fed them, verse 14. They, I would have soon subdued their enemies. I would have turned my hand against their adversaries. Keep going. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their fate would endure forever. Keep going. I would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock, I would have satisfied them. What's God talking about? If they would just listen, come on, if they would just listen, if you would just listen, <laughs> if I would just, now I'm not talking about you just in here listening, I'm talking about you regard it, you yield, you respond to what he says. If you and I would just listen, what's God saying? He said, I would have taken care of their enemies like this. I would have fed them with the finest of the wheat. Come on, say tasty wheat. Tasty, tasty, good wheat. <laughs> I would have satisfied them with honey. This is, this is talking about the best. If what? If, only, if they would just listen. <laughs> if they would just respond. And not push aside my holy words. If they would, this is where I would lead them. I'm going to give you another statement the Lord said to me a while back when I was in a service on a Sunday. Um, not one that I was preaching in. 
But the Lord said this to me. He said, here's a truth that most people don't want to hear. Most of the problems that, that a lot of my people are having are self-inflicted. Self-inflicted problems. <laughs> and he said, had they listened to me, most of the problems they're having, they never would have experienced. <laughs> Come on, do you believe that to be true? Not every problem. not Because not you, you have an enemy, you have an adversary. Not every problem comes because you didn't do something the Lord said. But a lot of them do. Had you been doing what he said, had you listened to him, come on, do you think doing that you've avoid, avoided some problems in your life? Come on, would you say, I've been following him some, and I might not have avoided all of them, but there's a lot I know that I, ha I have never even encountered just because I listened to him and followed him. Oh, that my people would listen. Biggest, one of the biggest problems on the planet you won't, that God's having with his people, they won't listen. Come on, when he talks, what do you and I need to do? We need to stand up straight, right? Tuck your shirt in. Shade your face. God's talking. Huh? Comb your hair. I mean, let's go. This is the Lord talking. You need to pay attention. Listen up. These are holy words. We're not going to push these aside now. This is the Lord talking. Now, I know that I feel a little anxious right now. But the Master said, I have His peace. That's it. That changes everything. I have it. Are you seeing it? Listen. Listen. <laughs> listen means you regard it, you respond, you yield. It means something to you. What about this group of people? They wouldn't listen. The, they wouldn't hear what is holy. I used to have a bus driver. We were just talking about this the other night. The other night uh, with Ty. Ty's my nephew. And uh, he was talking about his bus driver. And he was saying how mean she was. She's just, he's mean. She's just mean bus driver. <laughs> and uh, me and Mark were sitting there. And uh, we were encouraging. We said, well, what's her name? When you walk on the bus, say hi to her. And ask her how her day is. And smile at her. I forgot what her name is. Kathy or whatever. Hi, Kathy. How you doing today? And just smile at her. <laughs> and... Uh, and I, and I said, when you get off the bus, say, bye, Kathy, we'll see you tomorrow. And just smile at her. And uh, Ty is the, one of the sweetest kids. I mean, you know, all kids have different personalities. He is one of the sweetest boys that you could ever know. And, and Mark told me, he said, if anybody can do it, you can. And uh, so I bet Kathy was introduced to a smile today. Hi. And, uh, and we, we had a mean bus driver growing up. Me and Mark did <laughs> And, uh, and we were telling Ty, we, our bus driver's name was June. And June did not like it when the bus got loud. And June would say, you boys put your backs against the back of that seat, face the front of this bus, and shut your mouth. That's what June would say. And it was, she would say it word for word, just like that. And uh, she's a mean, mean lady, <laughs> to us anyway. She might have been nice when she got home. She was mean on that bus. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, why am I talking about June? What did June say? Put your back against the back of that seat, face the front of this bus, and shut your mouth. <laughs> we could have the same attitude when God's talking. <laughs> huh? Stand up straight now. God's talking. <laughs> Be quiet. Pay attention. Right? God's not, as mean, not mean like June, but that'd be a good response when you're hearing it. I need to stand up straight. This is the Lord talking here. These aren't throwaway words. This is Him talking. I have His joy. He said it. I have His peace. He told me he would never leave me nor forsake me. He told me that he's on my side. Those are big words. Do you see how you can get religious and just kind of push those aside? Act like they're not even there? He said he'd be my very present help in a time of need. <laughs> he told me to come boldly to the throne of grace. He didn't say come crying, begging, bawling on your knees. He said come boldly to the throne of grace. People get the idea that when they come to God, he's got his arms crossed. What do you want this time? Pray hard enough and maybe I'll decide to extend the hand and give it to you. That's not our father. What you find out about the father is when you go to him, what you need, his hands are out. He's already offering it to you. He wants you to have it. His arms aren't crossed in resistance. They're extended in offering. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Come on, come up here. What do you need? 
Ask in faith. I'll give it to you. These, these are big words, aren't they? And we shouldn't just throw things aside. We should listen. Respond. Yield. Sometimes the script, their scriptures are too simple for us. You know, you're going through a hard time, and somebody says, well, the Lord is on your side. Do not fear. And, and, and you know, we're too smart for that scripture. We're like, yeah, I, I heard that when I, 20 years ago when I got saved. You got a better one? No, I don't have a better one. You, this one will work just fine. And you can kind of just, uh, I know it says that. I know that, yeah, I've heard it before. You're not listening. Come on, do you see this? You're not listening. This is what hearing, the scripture talking about they're, they're hearing but not hearing. This is what it means. You're hearing it, but you're not hearing it. You're hearing it, but you're not responding. You're not listening. It's just bouncing off your eardrums. And if that's how you respond to the remedy, you don't get the cure. And what's God saying? Oh, if my people would listen. If they would just listen. If they would just respond. When I talked, listen, obey, follow. He had some good things for, for his people, doesn't he? Verse 12 in chapter 30 says this, Because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Are they respecting the word? Nope. They're not reverencing it. They're not honoring it. Come on, what follows this? Destruction, right? Are you seeing a pattern in the scriptures? It didn't happen just once. It didn't come, didn't come up just once. It comes up over and over again. And this is what it says in verse 13 and 14. I'm going to read this to you out of the Message Bible. Because you despise the word, this way of life will be like a towering, badly built wall that slowly tilts and shifts, and then one day, without warning, collapses. Did you hear that? One day, without warning, here it comes. This happens to the people of God. They ignore God year after year. They pay no attention. They don't come to church. They don't read their Bible. They call themselves Christian. And then one day, here it comes, collapsing down upon them. Not God's plan. Not His will. It says, smash to bits like pieces of pottery, smash beyond recognition, or repair a useless pile of debris to be swept and thrown in the trash. What happened to, when you don't respect the Word, when you don't honor the Word, when you push it aside? On the other side of that's destruction. You and I need to make much of the word, don't we? Huh? We need to make much of it. And we need to magnify it the way the Lord magnifies it. It's a big deal to Him. It should be a big deal to us. But keep going in verse 15. It says this. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. Now what does that say? Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Who's talking? God's talking. These words He's getting ready to say. Should they mean anything to these people? These words are their remedy. They are their answer. They would, they would keep the wall from collapsing down upon them. He's saying, you despise it. So this is what's going to happen. But he's so merciful. He says, but hold on a second. I'm going to give you another chance. <laughs> I'm going to extend my mercy a little further. And he says this. He said, in returning and rest, you will be saved in quietness and confidence it would be your strength. These words should be everything to them. These words should mean something to them. How should they respond? They should respond by going, yes, Lord. Okay, then we're going to return and rest. We're going to be quiet, and we're going to have confidence that you are our strength. If they did that, with those, those words right there, would that have been their remedy and their answer? It would have. Look what they said. But you said no. Huh? God's talking, and they said no. No to what? No to the medicine? No to the remedy? No to the answer? And so they're going to get destruction, and it's not by God's hand, and it's not what He wanted, but the thing they could, that could have prevented the destruction, they just said no to. Just say no. <laughs> huh? Say no to the enemy. Say yes to the Lord. But you said no, we'll flee upon horses. Look at verse 18. And therefore the Lord will wait that He may be gracious to you. The Lord will wait that He may be gracious to you. So now what's God doing? He's waiting. What's He waiting on? He's waiting on them to respond and yield to the remedy. 
do, do these people need to pray right now? <laughs> listen, listen. Do they need to go to the Lord and ask the Lord for anything? No, they need to respond to what he said. Not go and pray anything. They just need to respond to the remedy. They need to return. They might need to repent, but they don't need to ask him for anything. They just need to say yes to the, the, to the word, to what he said to them. Huh? Can you see this? What's he waiting for him? He's waiting for him to have enough respect for the word to respond. They don't need a prayer. They need to make a heart adjustment because apparently the words of God mean nothing to them. They need to adjust, don't they? They need to make an adjustment inside and say, these words mean something to us. We need to respond. We need to yield to these words. And this is what happens a lot. People get in trouble and they got in trouble because they don't respect the word. Do you know, I mean, coming to church and hearing good teaching and preaching is one of the most important things you can do in your walk with the Lord. Let's go ahead and go there. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and we'll close with this. 2 Chronicles chapter 36. Um, why? Because as you get training, as you get instruction, anointed, you get equipped to walk in victory in this life and to overcome trials and to overcome adversity. And, and I mean, you know, we have kids. It seems like somebody falls down every day at our house. You know, I mean, you're getting hurt and falling off beds and rolling downstairs. And why? Because kids are just, they don't know. They don't think sometimes. I mean, Grace is dancing the other night. She's going like this and backing up. And she didn't know there was boxes behind her because we got all these Christmas presents home. And she trips and falls down on the floor. You know, kids just, they just aren't aware because they're kids. But hopefully as you grow up, you know, you do less of that stuff, right? And you don't have so many self-inflicted wounds. And that's part of coming to church. You grow up. So that before you cut a rug backwards, you look behind you to make sure you're not going to fall spiritually. Right? And people, I mean, I'm just, I'm amazed at, at how a lot of people just they, just, they don't have any time for what we're doing tonight. And so what happens is self-inflicted problems come. And what was the root of the problems? No respect for the word. No respect for the answer. No respect for the thing that could have caused them to avoid the problem. No respect for the thing that would cause them to overcome the problem. So now they have the problem. So now what do we do when we have the problem? Come on, it's, it's, it's the, the flex tape, right? It's the guy's boat that's sinking and he puts that flex tape on it and the boat doesn't sink. And that's what people use prayer as. Well, now it's time to pray. Lord, do something. We're hurting. Do something. Help us. We need help. And God is so merciful. He is so merciful that sometimes he'll just come in and he'll help you and he'll just do a miracle and people just get help but the problem with that is if your heart doesn't get adjusted and and you don't make adjustments about respecting the word and giving it place in your life then in two weeks where are you going to be again right back in the same spot because your problem is not your problem your problem is the thing that caused your problem. And you need to go to the root of the cause. And the root of the cause is while you're in the, because the reason you're in this situation is because you've been ignoring God for the last 10 years. And then you want to pray and have him fix it overnight. <laughs> See, a lot of people just want God to fix their problems. They don't want to do anything he says. <laughs> it does not work like this. And you're not going to live the kind of life that God wants you to live like that. And you're not going to be used of him the way he wants to, you to be used of him living like that. Are you seeing this? Your problem is that you despised the word. You didn't respect it. It didn't mean anything to you. So you could have came and got some training. You could have been reading your Bible every day. I mean, you could have got online. You can listen online. It's free, right? It's free. Download it. Outlines, articles. And you might not even like me. But there's a lot of other preachers that are a lot different than me. You could go find somebody you really like. Somebody older. Somebody younger. Somebody woman. God could hook you up with somebody different. But it's, it's out there for you. But people are too busy. Right? Now, I'm not on a soapbox. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> People are too busy. Well, I'm just too busy. I mean, it's Wednesday. Come to church. 
And it's interesting that the same people, you know, during the week they'll go out and they'll, they'll go to games and they'll go shopping and they'll go to movies. They're in golf league, bowling league, backgammon league, <laughs> knitting classes. <laughs> That's all fine, but then when it's time to come to church, people just can't seem to get there sometimes. Not all people, just some people. And the reason is, is because the devil doesn't care about your backgammon league and you're not going to experience any resistance about getting there. There's not, have you ever been tempted to not go do something fun? <laughs> huh? You're never tempted, you're never tempted to not go watch a movie you're really looking forward to watching. You don't ever feel like, oh, I'm just so tired, I just, I can't do it. I just, I'm, that never happens to you. You're excited, you go, you look forward to it, it's fun. Why? Because the enemy, that doesn't matter, it's not going to have any positive effect in your life. The pull and temptation comes when it's time to do something that's actually going to make a difference in your life. Then all of a sudden you feel really tired. <laughs> and you have all these thoughts about how it'd just be nice to just stay home. And are you in 2 Chronicles 36? People are laughing in the building. <laughs> and look, does it matter if you're here or not? Does it matter if you're hooked in with a minute? Maybe not this ministry. Maybe you're watching on. Maybe it's not this ministry. Does it matter that you're hooked in with a church? Does it matter? Does it matter or can you, are you just fine by yourself? You call yourself a Christian and you just, you know, you don't, you don't read, you don't learn, you're not getting any good teaching and preaching and you're just floating along, floating for now. But you're, you're vulnerable, you're open game. And God doesn't want it like that. And so, in, I'll close with this. So, uh, 2 Chronicles 36, have you found it? God, fix my problem. Just don't mess with my life. <laughs> fix my problem. Just don't make any adjustments to my schedule. Come on. i tell you something that this ministry is about and what we'll continue to be about. We want to raise some people up that are going to be strong. We're, we're, we're into... <laughs> we don't want a bunch of Gomer Piles. Look, if you want to be Gomer Pile, you should probably go find a different preacher to listen to. You'll, you'll be a lot better off with him. We want some... Uh, somebody's asking who Gomer Pyle is. <laughs> Google it. Uh, we want some well-trained Navy SEAL type people that we're going to drop, but people in the body of Christ that we're going to drop you in at three o'clock in the morning into the enemy's camp and leave you there with an assignment and tell you don't get caught and don't die and get out and get your job done. <laughs> huh? I get excited about stuff like that. I want some serious believers, some tithing, Holy Ghost praying, church coming, Bible reading. That's the kind of people we want to raise up. Not people that, that get a little upset because you've been in church for a half an hour. That No, you're in the wrong place. You just need to go. You just, just, just click. Go watch somebody else. You're, you're, just, you're not in the right place. No, we're, we're, no we, want, we want to raise you up. So when you go into work, you're not just there working, but you're ready. And you're listening. And we send people like that out all over the community. People that are prayed up, strong, tithing, praying. People who spend time with the Lord. People that are willing to get there early, stay there late, stay as long as it takes. This is the people that you're going to win with. Huh? I got, I'm, on, I'm on this, but I need to talk about this. I get excited about this. Gideon. How many people did he have? 300. How many people did he feed? 135,000. There's a misnomer that there's strength in numbers. Wrong. There's strength when the numbers are strong. <laughs> huh? I could have a thousand kids that between two and four in here tonight and say, we're going to clean the building and try to do it for three hours. And I guarantee by the time we leave, it's going to be worse than when we started. Well, we had a lot of them. Hmm? <laughs> had a whole bunch of them. Got nothing done. Come on, you want to be right? Why, why am I talking about this? How did I get from what I was talking about to this? We want to raise you up. Hmm? We want to send you out. We want you to get results. If somebody's hurting, we want you to be equipped to help them to not hurt. And part of that is being committed to your training. Coming in and listening and training and listening and learning and applying and training. And, and that's how it works.
And I, I don't know if I have time to read this now, but let's go there and let me read it. <laughs> Second Chronicles 36. And what happened here is, well, we'll read this next time, but these people were in trouble. I'm not going to read all this to you, but these people were in trouble. And it said that God sent His messengers to these people. It said, in his, in his compassion, God sent His messengers. His messengers were men and women, men in this case, but it can be women, with His words in their mouth. And He sent it to this group of people that had gotten off, and they were in a bad place. They were hurting, and what did God send? He sent the remedy, right? And, the, and without going all into it, we'll go into it in a couple of weeks when we come back again, but... Um, the prophets, God's ministers, he, they gave him the word, which was their remedy. It was their answer. And the scripture says this, it said, The people mocked the prophets and despised their words. Are you hearing this? What do you think is going to happen to this group of people? If you mock the one with your answer, and you despise the answer that they're bringing, you're refusing the remedy. And on the other side of that, there's only one thing left, and it's destruction. Are you seeing this? And so often, God puts your answer in a preacher's mouth. Are you hearing me? <laughs> so often, He puts your answer in the person He's called you to sit under in their mouth. And what do you think we do all week? <laughs> Praying. Studying, preparing, spending time with Him. Why? So that when you come in here, your answer's in my heart. I don't even know what it is. I don't know what you're going through, but your answer's in there. You pray and believe with me, you won't leave without it coming out and being a help to you. And that's why it's so important that you find these, these people that God has hooked you up to. And, and a lot of times, your an, not, you, not you, you guys are here, but a lot of times somebody's answer, it's in my heart and it comes out of my mouth in church but they're not in church. So they missed their answer. And now they have problems. Because where were they? They were at home. Because they were, they were so tired. I just can't do it tonight. I'm <laughs> so tired. Huh? Come on, if you're a soldier in the army, I'm too tired, I can't do it? Um, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> you mean we gotta get there early? That ain't gonna work. And we got to remember that this is God's family. Yes, and you are God's children. True. But you also are a soldier in the army of God. And 2 Timothy told you to endure hardness as a good soldier. When it gets tough, huh? When you got to stay a little longer? Come on, what if I just said, I'm not going to, so don't get scared. But what if I just said, I, I just feel like we need to go about another 30 minutes tonight. Huh? Somebody said, I'm not there yet. Well, you'll get there. Right? But what should you say? Let's go. That's what you got. Let, let's do it. And I said, you know, on Saturday morning, we're going to start this new thing at church. We all need to be here at 8 because we got to get planned. We got to get it ready. Where's, where, come on, what should you be saying? Let's do it. I'll be there. You want us to get there at 730? <laughs> it's going to be from 7 to t uh, 8 to 10. Well, we can stay as long as you need us to. This is the kind of people that you need in the body of Christ if you actually want to do something Strong for the Lord. Anybody would say, I want to be one of those people. Huh? When it's time to do something, I want God to say, uh, where's Matt at? Because I can count on him to get the job done. Oh, and you can be one of those people too, right? Stand to your feet with me tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we adjust our hearts tonight and we set them aright where your word is concerned we recognize the holiness of your word and we make a decision tonight that we are going to show it respect we are going to respond right to it we are not going to reject it we are not going to refuse it it is our remedy it is our answer it is our help it is everything to us we soften our heart to your word. We open our eyes and our ears to it. And anything we're going through tonight, anything we're experiencing tonight, any attack, any problem, any trial, any test, your word is our answer. 
Your word is our remedy. And whatever, if we've been resisted it, resisting it in any way, tonight, Lord, we soften ourselves and we receive it and we yield to it and we respond to it. We listen. We regard it. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. And we thank you for the results that your word is producing in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got it in my heart tonight that people are, are going to get free from depression and anxiety. You're going to get delivered. Maybe watching online, maybe in the building. I don't, I don't know all what's going on, but I got that in my heart. There's freedom. Your answer came tonight. Your help came tonight. You don't have to be bound by the spirit of fear. You don't have to be bound by panic attacks, by depression. There's help tonight. There's a remedy tonight. There's an answer tonight. There's an answer tonight. As you respond to the living word of God, it will be your answer. It will be your help. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I declare it in faith right now that your days of depression are over. Your days of, of battling anxiety and panic attacks, they're over. No more will you be overcome by the evil one in that area. But you will walk in victory. You will receive total healing, total restoration. Thank you, Lord. We receive that tonight. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen?